Hey, welcome back to another Silphone Path video. Today, I'm just going to show you how I like to rig out my Komodo 6K. Like for example, here is one little rig we're going to build together, which is a nice light run and gun setup that I like very much with two GDU Derringer handles at the very bottom, just one battery, and then an iPhone as a monitor using the wireless connectivity that Komodo has in ad hoc mode. So I'll show you how I go about building this little fella and then I will show you a little more serious rig with uh, this 7 inch 3000 nit OC monitor that I just got with SDIs in and out and a really cool way of using a V-mount battery right on the back and these little FX Lion tiny V-mounts are so light that they really almost add no weight to this monitor which is light as it is. So this setup is actually really cool. Enjoy. So as you can see, these give us plenty more mounting points on the sides of Komodo so that we can do other cool things. These are the GDU Derringers. They're really cool handles made out of real wood and have this really sturdy aluminum top and they just look really cool. I was uh, worried originally that they would be very small because you can really hold them only with two fingers and especially if you go too close to the camera your thumb cannot actually fit here because thumb is meant to actually go here so there isn't all that much grip but they really work out well and they're just beautiful I mean as you can see they have this badge have this Global Dynamics United logo the burning tie the nuclear explosion thing yeah they just they just really look good so most people mount these somewhere here however when they are here you absolutely cannot put your thumb through this ideally and in the future i'm going to get a rosette mount here so that i can rotate them nicely but for now since i don't have one i don't want it i'm actually here i'm going for this very much lower position as a benefit of mounting them all the way here is that i can hit the record button with my thumb it's actually at a perfect position so even though this one doesn't have a trigger right here having it right here is actually really really cool we're going to put this 3 8 16 right here at the very top and then this little smaller one quarter 20 right underneath it now you have some play here so before you tighten it you probably want to make it straight so that they are not pointing down. If you have it there, just tighten up. I'm not really sure how tight these have to go, but I kind of go somewhere in between. I don't want to overdo it, but I don't want to underdo it either and then have them loose and scratch things up. So here's the first one. You could actually run and gun just with this one. Like you really don't need to, you can support the camera right from the bottom here. And this little guy is probably one third of the weight of red outrigger hand. But I really like this. This is cool. Now see how I said like when you put the thumb here, I just I don't, don't have a grip that much. You know, like my thumb wants to skip. But when I go now underneath here, this is going nowhere. So let's put the other one on. Check this out. So a really cool thing is that these actually have 3 quarter 20 mounts right here in the front. So if you wanted to rig something else out right here in the front, like if you wanted to put the hot shoe here for some reason, right, you could do that. Um, or if you want to rig out some kind of trigger or something. It's really nice that these are here because you can add on some other accessories that could be useful. But just the way that this is, 
how tiny this is and it's still light because these GDU handles are just made out of wood and they're not like even solid wood or something or maybe they are but it, they're very very light so this right here is one of my favorite setups some people still attach the outrigger handle however of course not facing down but they actually undo this and now you have a top handle very versatile you have the top handle which is very nice and sturdy so for those low shots and you have this one so you could do that if you're really into handles three people could hold this at once since we're going for a light run and gun kind of shoot and red has a really cool app for remotely managing this over your iphone and even watching the footage i like to go with this hot shoe or really cold shoe mount right at the very top then since i have this little guy from small rig i can put it there then i put this little guy from yolanzi on Amazon it's a little pricey however it's made out of solid aluminum so it's quite nice then you can go and put your iPhone on this of course we need our EF to RF adapter and then our EF lens there we go now you have your little camera and you can monitor it on the iPhone. You can view it on the screen. And it's a beautiful run and gun setup. Extremely nimble. You can even run with just one battery for like an hour, hour and a half, depending on what you're doing. I really like this. This, this is my go-to when I just want to run. And the last few touches I like to add to this. One of them is adding this 3816s to quarter 20 thread so that I can mount one more cold shoe slash hot shoe right there. That one is going to hold my road receiver, which I then tuck in like so so that we are not blocking the exhaust fan. And now, you can still fit your finger here perfectly, but then again, I only really hold it like this, so it doesn't bother me. So we have a wireless receiver, and we can put the other road mic, whatever we want to. If you're recording a stream or a forest or somebody talking, just give them this mic. You can run lav to it if you want to, and you'll have some really nice audio coming into your Komodo. And the very last step on any rig that I built, small or large, is actually these little peak design earrings. I call them earrings, I have no idea what they are called. Now with these earrings, you can actually use this strap and carry your Komodo right around your neck without worrying about dropping it and you can use the straps to aid you in stabilizing your footage because if you straighten it like this if you're holding it you could be shaken but if you pull against your neck I love these these things they say they can hold like 200 pounds each or some crazy amount like that so I trust them implicitly that they will hold my Komodo without any problem even when it's rigged out much heavier than this so there you have it this is my favorite light run and gun setup sometimes when I want my mic to be on top of the Komodo I'll actually mount one more hot shoe here and simply mount this road mic right here at the very top it actually works really well for me and I like it a lot and other times when I'm using a bigger lens, like for example, this 15 millimeter Irix Cine lens, they actually have this really cool mount, which is meant to go on the bottom to support your lens so that you can put it on the 
rails or whatever but I actually mount this on top and then I'll put a hot shoe and mount my mic right on top of the lens like so this setup I like very much plus it looks really cool now with this IRX 15 millimeter lens this becomes a little heavier and you will really welcome this strap from Peak Design because you want this around your neck with a tiny pancake 40 millimeter you can hold this tiny rig for as long as you want in your hands but once you add like a cine lens this does become heavy i mean this is probably like three kilograms in weight i don't know what's that in pounds call it five pounds or something i'm guessing here but it's not necessarily light anymore with the cine lens however it is compact and it's a really really nice setup to go out and shoot like I love that this Komodo is so small because I see it sitting on my desk and whenever I go outside I simply pick it up with me and on my neck it goes. Like that's the idea of a camera. You want it to be inviting, you want it to make you want to take it places and this little guy definitely does that for me. Now before we build the next rig, I'm not going to take you through the whole disassembly process of this so I'll just see you in about one second. I left the earrings on and the EF RF adapter and the Timmy ribs are still on the camera. Now from here we're going to go back to this guy and put the red outrigger handle. Now let's talk about the monitor. This right here is the OC G7. Advertised 3000 nit brightness monitor. It has a lot of different tools built in and I will actually go into a review of this monitor Later on in a separate video, but it's a really good monitor. It has both SDI as well as HDMI in and SDI and HDMI out. It has DC in 11 to 17 volts and it comes included with a DTAP cable that can go straight here and then underneath this is actually Sony FP battery or something like that. However, they nicely ship it with this V-mount lockable adapter so that I can use my V-mount batteries like this little FX Lion one. It simply clips on right there. It won't fall out unless you press this. So D-tap is here and then I simply go and put the power in here. And now you can power this little monitor with your battery and as you can see even here it's extremely bright like this thing is no joke you can see this in almost direct sunlight it's really really good however it's decently light considering it has this tiny little v-mount nano battery and i like actually to put this on komodo for some real important shoots where I really cannot miss a focus or anything like that. You have multiple options for mounting monitors. This uh, right here is the GDU Global Dynamics United monitor mount which goes perfectly here and it fits right on top of Red's own outrigger handle. However, I don't actually like this one and it's for what it is it's really pricey. This thing is like $70. What I like more is this tension arm. So this little guy, you can actually go and move around and position any way you like and then when you have the position you want, you simply tighten this and it will never move out of the way. So this is what I like to use for my monitors. Now in order to tighten this a little bit better because it's never tight enough, best is to put some tension into the arm and then twist further. Now this is not going to move and then you can release your tension arm and put the monitor on it. Position the monitor where you want it and then tighten this as hard as you can because it's a tension arm. It needs to have some tension unless you want to not have tension and you want your stuff to move around which is also fine. And then we need batteries my good and trusty 45 irix and i just go and mount my quarter 20 manfrotto release plate see right there and then komodo can sit straight and everything is fine this gives me enough clearance 
to change the aperture and to do the focusing. And it's very balanced this way. The balance lays right here. So if I wanted to add something more at the back, that would be fine. But again, it depends what lens you really put up front. Now we're missing only one more thing, and that is the SDI cable. This is a three foot coiled one. However, I'm not a fan of dangling cables and whatnot. And this cable just seems like an overkill. So I went and bought a couple of different ones until I found the right one. I even bought this purple one and then you had to go like around maybe here and you know make like a little mess. However, the other day I got this little guy. This is a really thin, super awesome right angle to right angle SDI BNC kind of thingy, which works quite well. I think this one is a foot long. So we're going to put it here. Okay. And straight back here into Komodo. All you need is a foot long. And now this tiny little cable is all you need to get from the monitor where it is down here. And there you go. Once I get the V-mount back plates here, I bought one from Tilta and one from Core SXW or whatever they are called. You can actually remove these two batteries, put the V-mount battery here and then instead of having a battery on here, you could put the battery on the back and power this monitor from your V-mount at the same time that you're powering Komodo. So that's gonna be a second kind of setup that I have with this to see which one I like more. For now, I finally found these BPs. I actually ended up buying them for a ton of money on eBay used, but I really wanted to have the recommended BP battery here so that I can have hot swap capabilities and, and you know enjoy my life and not have to just worry about having one battery however this does get heavy but then again we do have these little earrings from peak design and just put these little guys in here you have the stable way of shooting you're looking at the really big much bigger than this little guy monitor if they made a five inch of this I would buy it in a heartbeat however the one with super high brightness is only made in 7 inch so I had to go for that one but this is a phenomenal setup to go around shoot have some fun Shout out to my